What's going on guys? So today we have a really interesting video. In front of me, you see my Skag Cheetah 2. Now, this has pretty much been relegated to mowing only. And when I say that, a lot of people would be like, well, what else would you use something like this for? Well, we have the Toro Z Master and the Toro is being used for everything. I mean, we haul carts behind it. We have buckets attached to it. We put the weed eater on it. It's like a sport utility mower. We take it everywhere and do everything with it. And that was actually provided for review and evaluation by the folks at Toro. It's the 2000 HDX commercial series mower. This right here, if you've followed the channel for several months, you'll realize was one that we purchased. And this specific mower is a commercial grade mower, has a huge Kawasaki FX1000 on the back of it. I believe it's like a 38, 39 horsepower motor. This thing is a beast and super heavy, but one thing that's important to know about something like this is that it burns through a lot of fuel, as does everything else we have out here that utilizes fuel. The Toro, this, the tractors, the excavator. I mean, everything we have out here is pretty fuel heavy. And until, you know, there's a really, really good battery option for commercial mowers, we're gonna still be burning through fuel. And one of the challenges that people often have when it comes to fueling up mowers is how to refill it without getting fuel everywhere or without finishing with your hands smelling like fuel. And that's a problem that I've had. So, you know, we have to fill these things up weekly. Uh, sometimes we fill them up more than that if it's grass mowing time of, uh, of the week. And again, the biggest challenge we often have is getting fuel into the machine. So I made a video on this and I actually talked about, you know, how many fuel cans we have and what we use. And a lot of viewers suggested that we give a product a try. So I reached out to a company that everyone suggested and they sent me some of their products and I really want to give a big shout out to them for that. But I'm really excited to see how much easier it makes the process of fueling up a mower. Hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so here it is. In front of me, you were looking at a box that was sent to me from the good folks over at SureCan USA. Now, I was completely unfamiliar with this brand until you, my viewers, told me that I should reach out to them and see if they can uh, send me some cans to uh, demonstrate on the channel. So, for me, this is a whole new experience using something like this. I've never used anything other than the traditional old fuel can that you see right here. This is pretty much the staple in many garages of what you would use to add fuel to your mowers or your equipment. Now, I have these in both uh, yellow and red for gas and diesel, but the SureCan solution is supposed to be a far superior way of fueling up your equipment. So let's get this box open and see what's inside. Okay, so here they are laid out in front of you. I got my red cans for gas. I got my yellow cans for diesel. Check this out. First of all, just from a quality perspective, when you feel one of these, they feel incredibly durable. I mean, when you buy these things right here, they don't feel, I guess, flimsy per se, but they certainly feel cheap if that makes sense. And these fuel cans cost about $30 each for a five gallon fuel can. They have this really interesting design up here. And because of this design that actually allows you to dispense the fuel, it kind of makes these a pain in the butt to work with. They're super messy. They never let the fuel flow out as quickly as you'd like. Uh, you have to burp them occasionally. They get fuel on you, on your equipment. And even though they're designed to kind of prevent that, they, they just don't do a great job with that design. And not only that, after a while, sometimes these seams, start to come apart and you start actually leaking fuel out of these things. So I'm not a big fan of these. And, you know, I just personally don't like using these, even though it's kind of one of those needed necessities when you're working. Again, about a $30 gas can. These range between about $50 and $60 per gas can. So they're not actually that much more expensive considering what they can do for you. If you are an RVer and you need to keep fuel for your generator with you, if you are someone who mows grass or has tractors or other things like that and you need diesel or gas this is a really really good solution shoot if you have a toy hauler and you need to keep extra fuel because maybe your uh, your fuel tank on your toy hauler is being used for your generator these can really really come in handy especially considering what they're designed to do in the convenience factor so why are these so convenient first of all look where the spout is it actually comes off of the bottom 
So you don't have to tip the fuel can over to get fuel into your machine. You simply pull this down, rotate it, and put it in the spout. So whenever we look at my tractor here, which we're gonna fill up in a little bit, or my zero turn, this is where the fuel uh, actual nozzle is, or the fuel cap is. And when we put fuel in, we're always tipping the fuel can over. And it's almost impossible during the process of filling this up not to get some fuel around this area or on your hands. But with this design, because the spout is at the bottom and you have a trigger up here that actually releases the flow of fuel, it completely eliminates the need for you to tilt your fuel can over. Now filling it up is gonna be by means of this right here. And it even has a little like valve that you can open and close to put the nozzle into. Check that out and it's spring loaded. It's a heavy duty spring. So you fill this up very similar to how you'd fill a vehicle up. You tilt this up like this, you put the nozzle in, fill it up, and then when you're ready to use it, you simply put this nozzle into your piece of equipment, press the handle, which has a little safety trigger on it, and it will fill up your equipment with fuel. Very, very, very cool idea. You know, when it comes to the tractor, let's go over there so I can show you something real quick. So on the tractor, you have this fuel nozzle for your diesel. And again, you're tipping your diesel canister over to fill this up. Whereas with the design of the SureCan, I can simply put the nozzle in and I can set the container up here as opposed to having to tip it in here, which again can really, really alleviate the mess that you get from traditional fuel cans. Okay, so I got my buddy Mark here with me. He is gonna help demonstrate the process of filling this can up from this can. Now, I, I hope this doesn't get messy because this is gonna kind of demonstrate some of the challenges of using this type of fuel can, which I'm sure everybody who's watching this video has used at some point or uses currently. And you're gonna see specifically why if you're at a fuel station, this is such a better design because you simply put the fuel nozzle in here, you fill it up just like you would a vehicle and you're good to go. But yeah, let's go ahead and empty this one into this one so we can go ahead and demonstrate uh, the process of filling this up at least. And hopefully we can do this in a very clean way and not get any fuel on the outside of the fuel can. That's my challenge to you, Mark. All right, let's give it a shot. So he's got to lift the whole canister up to get it in here. So he's got a full fuel can and he's pinched my finger. Hold on, there we go. This is a very slow process. So you get to get a little bit of a workout when it's 100 degrees outside to fill up this fuel can. You can see the level over here filling up. And just like most fuel cans, you can see through it very easily so you can check what level or how much fuel you have in it. Throwing these things around get heavy after a while? Yeah. <laughs> we go through a lot of fuel out here. We are uh, we're certainly making a lot of trips to the, the gas station and we always put uh, ethanol free in the mowers. We go through enough of it. I don't know if it's absolutely needed, but still, if I can avoid putting fuel with ethanol in it in the mowers, I, I try to. All right. So we're almost to the halfway point right here. I can probably let go of that. One thing I didn't check is to see, okay, so the fuel line is right here, but we know that this is five gallons and we know that this is five gallons. So once we, uh, we get empty, we will see specifically how it looks on the fuel indicator right here. Then here's the diesel can. Essentially the only real difference is the fact that it's yellow. This one's made for diesel. This one's made for gasoline. Okay, so this fuel can, which was filled slightly over the five gallon mark, which is right here, it was filled pretty much to the top, uh, maxed out at, I guess on this one, it maxed out a little bit over the top. So this can hold a hair over five gallons, and this one right here holds right at five gallons. So there's a little bit of difference in capacity, but with the better design of this, I think it makes sense because you're probably only lacking about a quart of fuel that's left in that one. All right. So we ended up spilling a little bit on the outside of this one, but what I wanna see now is just how much easier this fuel can is to use to fill up a mower. So Mark, if you could go ahead and grab this fuel can. I guess we gotta take the cap off the end first. There we go. Anything in there? Yep. Okay, so that's kind of a filter. It's yep. kind of cool. 
Okay, so yeah, if you look inside of the end of this, you'll see that they have it full of this kind of a mesh material here, and it acts as a filter in case you have any debris or anything in here. It keeps it from coming out. That's really cool. Okay, let's take it over and fill up the skag. Now, the skag isn't that empty. We actually just recently filled it when we did a quick little mow of a certain area. But the way you do this one, and Mark, what I want you to do is let me know if you think it's actually an easier process. Because all he's doing at this point is he's putting the spout in down here. And I believe you pull this part flat and see what happens. Yep, I can hear it. Very cool. Let me get under here real quick and see what the fuel level looks like. So, is this easier for you? Honest opinion. Very <laughs> or much <laughs> he's a one word kind of guy so essentially we are uh we're filling it up without having to hold the whole gas can so this is the process he has one hand just keeping it from tipping over he's got the spout inside of here he's not having to balance and hold the fuel can up here because that's really where the problem is and he's able to fill it up easily so we are almost full probably it's only going to probably take about a gallon of fuel because we, again, we recently filled it up because we got to mow the grass this week. We got two tanks. We could always fill the other tank up. But you know what? I never actually fill the other seven-gallon tank up. So I think we're good here. And I think we are just about full. I think we're full. All right. So you can let go. Very, very cool. So here, here's my, my question for you, Mark. One through ten... What would you rank the other fuel can that we just emptied into this one in terms of convenience? Honest opinion. Because you, you fill these things up all the time. Mm, get that one a solid six. And this uh, ten and how easy it is. Okay. And just as far as handling it and handling filling it up. And filling it up. Yeah. Because as much as you could probably go really, really slow and careful with the other one not to spill fuel, it's almost inevitable that you're going to spill a little bit of fuel with the other one. Okay, so what I want to see here, oh, what were you going to say? Even with filling up that one, you're going to spill a little. This one, the cap's got a spring on it, so it will actually hold the nozzle in yeah. without it falling out. Yep, and you're not twisting caps off. Every time we go to the no, gas station to fill these off. That seems to be off. the problem most of the time. Yeah. Try to get the cap off. Yep. Very cool. Okay, so we've just cleaned off the nozzle a little bit here. So one thing you want to keep in mind is when you're done fueling, you're going to have a little bit of fuel set up in this, in this tube right here. And the reason why is it actually has to go up a little bit then down. So this is holding a little bit of fuel. And we pulled it out and a little bit dripped out. So we're gonna see if we can actually do this without any fuel dripping out or a very, very minimal amount of fuel dripping out once we actually pull the nozzle out of the actual uh, fuel fill. So go ahead and put a little bit more fuel in. Okay, so now we have the line filled again. So Mark, see if there's a way you can manipulate this. So as you pull it out, maybe you turn it down a little bit and you drain whatever's left in that tube out into the actual mower. You just gotta wait here a little bit because what we're doing at this point is we're trying to get everything out of this line right here and it's dripping really slow at this point. And then we're good. All right, so that's essentially the process. and. Boy, it makes the process so much easier because, again, you're just simply pressing a trigger right here, and it's got that little safety so you don't accidentally press it. And it just gives you the ability to, to really fill up your equipment in a far more convenient fashion. Man, I really, really appreciate the viewers who told me to try these things out. I want to give a big shout-out to the folks over at SureCan for providing these cans for review and evaluation on my channel at no cost. Um, very, very cool product and very affordable product. Honestly, between $50 and $60 is what I've seen them. And I think that that's a relative bargain. Most people probably only have one of each, so you're not investing a lot of money. Um, but you sure are getting a lot in return. And I've watched some of their YouTube videos. You should see how they torture test these things. They're pretty amazing. Anyways, I'm going to put a link in the description of this video to SureCan. Uh, and if you're interested in getting their products, uh, they're available all over the internet. Um, and I think you can even buy them direct as well. But yeah, absolutely cool product built in the USA. That alone makes it worth spending maybe a little bit more so you know you're getting a better quality product. Three-year warranty. Awesome. But then the next thing we need to ask ourselves is... What are we going to do with these old fuel cans?